And we're going to get started with some interesting stuff right after this. Welcome to Kingdom Talks, where we engage leaders, teachers, creative artists, and everyday people in conversations that awaken listeners to new revelations of the Kingdom Age. All of our courses, community conversations, partnership links, and much more can be found on our website, kingdomtalksmedia.com. Now, enjoy the show. All right. Well, I'm excited to have Michael Basham back on the show. We actually had a uh, time scheduled a few weeks back, and for some reason uh, it didn't happen. I don't remember what happened, but anyway, uh, glad you're on here, Michael. It's been too long, and it's always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, I think we we have we have a good time, and yet a lot of people don't know necessarily the 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 serious side of you that you know where you're really working in the spirit realm to. To, uh, to, to do some damage. I'll just say it that way. Um, I, I don't know where you want to go with our conversation today, but it's titled Spirit Realm Captain's Logs, which is uh, plural, not possessive. <laughs> so That's right. Thank you. Thanks, Gil. Um, I'm sorry I have some Hawaii dirt on my shirt from uh, digging dirt out there, but I'm trying <laughs> to get in touch with the land as, as physically as I can possibly. Digging in, getting in there. <laughs> just literally digging into Hawaii here as Hawaii is on lockdown and is being controlled by the United Nations and basically becoming a fortress of the Antichrist. But we're here, you know, <laughs> we're also digging in. And I thank you for having me on. Um, I really appreciate all the work that you do. Um, I, I've been actually talking to some some of the old heroes of the fringe Christian movement. Oh, yeah. Um, Peter Goodgame. And he's been on a, on a journey of the faith. I haven't had a whole lot of time to talk deeply into where he's at right now, but I was driving home yesterday and it just hit me that we're going on these journeys in the spirit and we have captain's logs, different places that you've been, different ministries that you've been involved with, different people that you've worked with. You know, what, what is that? It's my captain's <laughs> log. Oh, that's so cool. See, I just have like thousands of these little things. But <laughs> I, I, I'm, yeah, I've always, for whatever reason, for me, it means something when it's a nice journal, my captain's log, <laughs> that uh, it, it, I, I'm in it almost every day. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yes, I, I really would recommend people to journal, as in keep a prophecy book, write down mm -hmm. scriptures by hand if possible, but if not, at least... Right, like, okay, this is the date, this is kind of my prayer and some scriptures, and then just open your heart to the Lord and see what visions he's sharing, what, what he wants to say every day if possible, whenever you can. Yeah. Um, because that's that's really where the power is. We you know, encourage There's so much it. to say in so little time, but. Yeah, yeah. we encourage it uh, big time because especially journaling the encounters that we have in the heavens, um, yes. You know, there's some stuff that I probably would have forgotten had I not written it in the journal. And yet, years ago, Father gives me a little snapshot of something, and and then I don't see it again for weeks or months, and then another snapshot. But it's expanding a wow. little bit. And and I've been on a few journey journeys like this where there's been a revelation upon revelation, but it's been over you know months and years. And if I didn't have a journal, I would be lost. Yes, yes. It's for your own faith sake. Yeah. I believe it's uh, really where you're going to get in tune and in and, and touch base with the actual intelligence of heaven because we're actually soldiers. We're actually being directed by the master commander. We're just the little agents and little cogs can change huge things. I mean, look what yeah. earth shaking sh just total shifts you guys are doing with Kingdom Talks and all the other ideas that you're working on. I mean, I can't even keep up with you guys. I just watch you. And I'm like, that's amazing. <laughs> um, but that's basically where I'm coming from is talking about mystic fringe Christian missionary, and then staying to the foundation. My grandfather, Don Basham worked with Derek Prince and just coming, coming back to the, some of those old sermons. I listened to a lot of Ern Baxter. Uh, Liz Walker is one of my new favorites just to get the foundation, but then to, ask God, okay, use me, put me on the battlefield. And I'd yeah. like to share some dreams recently that I've been having some signs, some visions and different things. But what the basic just kind of overall um, outline is 
we might have different theology, doctrine, whatever, but as long as you can compare notes with others, mm-hmm. rather than being like, okay, who's who's got more power in the spirit? You know, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, hey, which star quadrant have you been to? Oh, wow, I know that place. Hey, look, I found this secret mountain with these treasures in it. Um, <laughs> that kind of thing, and that's where we're going to, as the bride, I think, really come together and have a huge effect. You know, and that's right on with what, you know, my heart is, is seeing the body come together and, uh, you know, love the, the, the leaders in the movement and so forth. Um, but if we're going to make leaps and bounds into this next age, you know, where we're actually seeing things change, we can't rely on one person's downloads. We have to understand yes. that as a body, we are all getting downloads. And when we are able to come together and share those experiences and the, the captain's logs and talk about what we're experiencing, that's where we're going to find truth. That's where we're going to find exponential growth in our understanding of things by engaging the body, not not just yes. going and listening to a speaker. That's why, you know, to me, the conferences have got to change to where we have a variety of people sharing and there's opportunity for the body to engage with those leaders so that there can be conversations. Uh, there's always going right. to be leaders, always going to be leaders, but we've got to include yeah. the body and, and disperse of the power so that um, mm-hmm. we see and understand that it's about the body, not about any one person or people. Yes, exactly. And that, that reminds me, Gil, how does it feel that, you know, you're the master of Zoom calls before it was cool? Now, like <laughs> all the churches, all the politicians, they're all like, Zoom. Well, you, you know, know it's interesting when when during, we were just looking at stats. Uh, in fact, I was just looking at stats last night and you know, and I'm, and I'm realizing, wow, February, you know, December, January, February, you know, we're kind of doing okay. All of a sudden, you know, February, March, April, May, just this big explosion. I'm like, oh, duh. Yeah, everyone's in lockdown. And so they have no choice but to watch me. No. <laughs> no. So cool. Yeah, but, that, you know, it made a big difference. And yeah, now everybody's online. Um, and <sighs> it's it's what a sign. It's it's different. It's interesting. And I believe the Internet's going to play a big part of the next stage. Yes. I don't know yes. how. And that's that's one of the things that we're um, looking at is people are always saying, oh, my gosh, it's a choice between Jesus and my phone. You know, when I'm taking a bath, like to pray or to listen to a podcast or something like that. I've been really testing this out recently, but we've talked about this with Berlin is talked about this a lot too and others that we're all the functions that we're using the internet and our cell phones and all this stuff to use the internet is is just a scaffolding of what we're actually supposed to be able to do as Amen. sons and daughters of god and even as just as humans peter Goodgame was mentioning i said peter what do you want me to share on the show and he was like talk about god's love for humanity like humans aren't like intrinsically evil we are born into sin but God really loves us and life and the the whole problem that we have right now with this evil mask culture that's really channeling shamanism, you know, shamans wearing masks, channeling demons. You're wow. seeing BLM. That's another <laughs> manifestation of, of demonic African gods and, of course, satanic um, communism, which is just Satanism. But it's like those manifestations, the spiritual war is so present and behind it is this illuminati masonic religion that even if you're a mason and you you think it's a nice little club uh, i interviewed a guy named gary wayne it's really really cool uh talk with him about the gnostic infiltration of the churches and mainstream christianity and society yeah. so gnosticism basically at its core is that first of all they don't really believe in jesus physically and they also believe that all pleasure is somehow evil that the flesh right. is bad and um i just i wanted to mention peter's uh his his captain's log if you will yeah today even though i don't agree with peter in a lot of things we're totally on different spectrums politically all this stuff but it's like i look at him and i see a man that's come through the fringe you know written famous foremost knowledge about the antichrist stuff Mm -hmm. end time knowledge one of the heroes of fringianity and he's still (laughs) testing things out he's still reaching for stuff he's not trying to be like 
I am the Peter Good game. No, he's like, hey, could you help me dig that ditch? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and then we start talking about well, what are you into right now? He's constantly growing. And I'm like, okay, cool. Oh, you went here. Oh, you've been there. Oh, and oh, wow. Yeah, you kind of went off there. But you know, <laughs> where I'm coming from is mission work with the Family International. I was in Taiwan for 10 years. I've been to China, Japan, India, Nepal, and I've lived in these countries. And with these missionaries, the mission group died 10 years ago. And a lot of the pedophiles that were lurking rose to the top. Hmm. Um, and so now whenever I meet someone from that movement, no longer is it, hey, you should come visit us, stay with us. Oh, we're going to go stay with you in this city. No, it's like, let me find out where you're at. Like, where have you been since... Yeah. ages past like some people it's like that movie alien where people hear that distress signal and they go and they go to that derelict alien spaceship crash and they go in and there's those those face huggers that suck you and put those <laughs> amoebas inside that explode and eat you and kill the crew and so that's what we're dealing with a lot of ministries paul says uh concerning those that are shipwrecked in the faith so yeah. you want to be careful when you see somebody that's like, hey, come over here. Yeah, we got stuck in the coral, but we have treasure. Yeah, they have treasure, but watch out for the monsters on board, the aliens, the demons, the, the things that are going to eat you, the zombies. That's yeah. what I'm dealing with to this day. So, Michael, um, I'm just realizing, you know, if anybody is watching for the first time and they don't know your background, why don't you tell them a little bit about who you are and what you're doing. Uh, you said that you're, you're mm -hmm. Mike, you're Don Basham's grandson, but um, you are, uh, I mean, number one, you've launched a lot of people. Um, you've launched us. You've, you know, in terms of uh, inspiring us to start a, a talk show. And I think, um, uh, um, who else? Um, uh, Martin Smith. And, and anyway, I just know there's a lot of the next agers that you were kind of the uh, initial person that, encourage them and launch them from your fringe radio network that you're a host on right yes um well i mean you guys were already doing this it's just like hey you want to do a podcast what i like to do now as far as uh i do my own little rants and every once in a while i'll, I'll interview people but um i'm coming from one crashed spaceship called the discipleship movement which i was born into into the rubble of that and um I went to Japan as a 17 year old, met the Lord. My testimony is like really long and has a lot of miracles in it, but I'm just this normal, like almost like an avatar of Mario going through the different adventures. Like I'm just seeing, I'm like, whoa, no way, no way, cool. You know, um, God has done a lot of really mighty things for me, even though I really don't deserve them. I've just kind of stepped into these, these battles and I've noticed, wow, there's this huge sword here and a fallen soldier with all of his armor there. I'll take that armor. Okay, I've got this sword now. Okay, I'm going forward. And these, wow, this movement is crashing, but let me take these keys of the kingdom. Wow, you can call on angels? Wow, Ian Clayton? Could that be true? Wow, Neville Johnson? Cool. Neville Johnson passes away. Yeah. I talked to his son yesterday. We're going to do a show, I think, on uh, Monday or Tuesday. Anyway, I'll, I'll put a link out there, but Mark Johnson is, is stepping up to the plate and, and you could see the sorrow in his eyes, but he's going forward. The Lord has told him it is time. And, and for me too, I heard the Lord was like, training days are over. <laughs> you know, it's mm. time for some action now. Get yeah. Ready. Yeah. So, um, I guess long story short, I'm just, you know, I'm 36, but I feel like I've had like over 300 years of just stuffed in things. And I'm, I'm a dork for the kingdom. I love learning new aspects of what is what is reality really not just church kingdom but actual like can we telep telepathically step into the kingdom and connect with each other even i'm starting to have dreams other people are having dreams with me and others with spaceships and coming together and doing these wild like very interesting projects i had a dream with one of your guests i can't remember his name but he has he's like a little bit bigger and has gray hair and it's, it's kind oh, of steve hampton interesting guy and i think it was steve hampton steve hampton he's um, actually where... staying here with us right now he's been here for... no way okay i didn't even know his name in the dream i just knew he's like <laughs> oh you're on kingdom talks a lot and he... yeah he's great basically in the dream there was captain marvel the the actress all dressed up and she had these notes 
and she was at a prayer meeting with you guys and him and she was turning the pages and just kind of putting writing down she had all these scriptures prophecies of one of these prophecy books and i was looking at it like oh that's that's kind of easy you just kind of turn the pages and just kind of put your hand on them and go through you know what god has said and and then we went to this big house and so maybe it was your house i don't know whose house it was but there were all these heavy things that needed to be lifted and moved and we looked and it was like everything was already moved automatically like wow. something had just taken place just by going through and reading rereading some of these prophecies and scriptures then i go outside and i looked and above and i guess steve hampton or whoever it was led me and arrived and outside there were these like glistening crystal nets over the building that was like an invisible force field but i could see there was something there so i was like this is cool and the dream went on for a long time and it was like we ended up time traveling to new york city to the new york times headquarters and had a had a uh, like a meeting with these different movie producers it was this really weird long dream that did not make very much sense but you know, that's the kind of thing that we do it's like god will put you on these missions if you want we don't need to depend on the internet be ready for them to kick us off but let's prepare our spirits to start to tap into what henry groover used to call and he passed away and I had another dream with him, which I'll share maybe on the next episode, I guess. All right. Next half hour. But we are prayer walkers. We are people who can go anywhere and do anything. And God can just like drop you off. For me, he dropped me off in Tokyo. And then boom, I'm in Nepal. And then I leave. And then there's historical worst earthquakes ever. Or Taiwan, you know, battles with fallen missionaries and pedophiles and kidnappers and evil people. But in the midst of my house is extreme joy and protection. And yeah. like God is letting you see this is happening, but I'm with you. Yeah. And I've always wondered, Lord, is this really going to be the end of the world? Like what's what's wrong with my life? Why do I always have these horrible, crazy stories? And, and then to 2020 starts <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, this is welcome to my world, everybody. I've been living in the end of the world since 2004. <laughs> like, this is when I dropped out of the system. But um, well, anyway. Well, hey, uh, this is a good time. I'll, we'll take a break and um, be back in about one minute. An Oops, ecclesia good. is family doing kingdom business. When you join an ecclesia with Kingdom Talks Media Commercial that is break. going through the Ultimate Impact series, this is what a typical week might look like. During the week, you'll watch the Ultimate Impact teaching videos based on that week's topic. Each video is about 10 minutes long, followed by a time for you to shift focus into the heavenly realm, allowing Father to guide you into further revelation. Once a week, you'll gather with your Ecclesia group in person or most likely through Zoom conferencing to typically do two things. One, relate with each other as you share insights about that week's topic. And two, shift focus into the heavenly realm as an ecclesia to practice engaging Father together. Week after week, you and your ecclesia will gain new perspectives through the teachings, discussions, and your experiences individually and together in the heavenly realms. All right, we are back after that commercial break. <laughs> I forgot to tell you that, uh, yeah, when that is playing, it picks up everything that we say or say or, or any noise we make. But <laughs> anyway, always a pleasure to be on with Michael. It's uh, such a good time. And, and yet, again, the, the seriousness of the work behind all of it is is always um, profound. And, and uh, so, you know, some of the stuff you were talking about, well, actually, I want to I want to switch gears. I want to go, you know, to the spirit realm captain's logs. What prompted you for that that title? Because I know you're talking about, you know, the captain's logs. Yeah. What what is it that you're wanting to share from that realm? Well, my point in, in bringing up the I, I talk about five major subjects. Anytime I turn on my show, or even if I don't have a guest, there's so much info to go through. So, the five are basically my foundation Christianity, Derek Prince, John Basham type of Christianity. Uh, number two would be Christian mystics, stuff that you guys largely talk about. 
three would be the fringe Christian movement. Four would be my kind of more fringy background of like being in the family missionary work, some extreme doctrines that I don't think the world is even ready for yet. If, if they're even never needed. And um, five would be kind of the info war, the physical, political, historical, provable battles. They're all having to do with spiritual warfare. I mean, my grandfather wrote all these books about warfare. One of the things that God has been showing me in my life is discernment about different individuals. Like, okay, don't just trust somebody because they're a Christian pastor, yeah. missionary, whatever. <clears throat> And um, when we're talking about looking at your captain's logs, it's not just entertainment. Like, hey, wow, here's your, I see you got a prophecy about spirit, the vegetables of the spirit. I didn't know anybody else saw the vegetables of the spirit, but looks like you saw them too. <laughs> Some random revelation <laughs> and stuff. It's, it's entertaining and it's, it's edifying. But we're talking about like actually getting stuff done, being prepared yeah. for what the ministries that God has us um, in mind to do in, in these coming days. So the captain's logs are kind of a sign of like, where have you been? Are you growing? Are, are you still living in 1975 when God did the thing or even just last year? Or are you seeking the Lord every day? Are you, is God bringing new things across your path? Is he bringing new, um, even teachers movements, you know, or, or do you still live in this kind of it's and you can kind of smell like something yeah. kind of stale and clammy around those people, kind of cult. <laughs> and um, that's basically what where I was going with that. And then it's also something where you can be like, oh my gosh, you know how to fly spirit ships, or you know how to buy locate or try locate. Or as Ian Clayton <laughs> is talking about his Patreon now, he's like, he slips it out. He doesn't really go into detail, but he's like, you know, there's so much to do in the spirit and the stars and all this stuff that. Basically, you can just get avatars that do things for you that your spirit can go into and work on different planets and then go back into your body. And you can do multiple ones at the same time. And I'm look, I'm blinking. I'm like, how does he know that? I want I want to know out more about the Abzi because the Illuminati has these cloning pro programs that are coming out. More and more people are testifying. Um, Elena was on Tribulation Now confirmed again that there are underground clone meat suit bodies for demons and i know this sounds really dark and it is but what epstein was doing what bill gates was involved with and are involved with is underground cloning things where people can basically be cloned and then a demon can inhabit that clone or your spirit can inhabit that clone and they'd have all kinds of uses for this but notice how demonic the blm creepy weird pedophile people are out on the streets doing the kind of things they're doing probably a lot of those are not really human completely and they're now, very have you sickly. interviewed some of these people i've met um people that were in the super soldier program and they're a mess it's it's just absolutely just tragic what goes on in that whole world i wouldn't recommend your audience to necessarily go jump into that yeah swamp yeah. but what i look for is Okay, according to my captain logs, what I've seen, you know, I, I need to find some landing gear here. Like, I don't have the reason I started listening to everybody and you guys and Ian and fringe Christians. I need some basically a, a, like a bearings of where I'm at with where my spirit, yeah. my faith is going to see if like if I'm on course, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm the prophet. I know it. No, I, I need to look and see like, okay, is there anybody else going in this direction? Is, is am I crazy for talking about aliens and spaceships and clones and random weird time travel experiences that are usually in dreams, but the visions, I get those, but people don't tend to believe in visions sometimes as much as a dream. Cause a dream is like, look, I dreamed this, you know? <laughs> I had this literal experience with a demon with Henry Groover's mantle, I'll tell you in a second. But the point is going into these extra dimensional experiences, we need to find landing gear. And when you hear paranormal stories, when you hear about alien abductions, for example, or the data on how big the pedophile underground network is, or what the Illuminati papers actually say, or what people are experiencing in their churches with mystic Christian experiences, what it does is it provides sort of like a grid of understanding. Yeah. You know, so well, you know, you're not just like all over the place. Yeah. And I've, 
I, I in the beginning when I first kind of started getting this download, I was joking about it, but I don't know that I'd even joke about it anymore with the idea. Yeah. And I know a lot of people listening, if they haven't heard the whole story and the understanding of it, would freak out. But that, you know, okay, let me start back. Let me back up just a little bit. You know, we're in a transition. We're transitioning into a whole nother age. And right. as we're transitioning, it is difficult and I would even say impossible right now to try to lay down ground rules and bring up doctrine and say this is the way it is. You know, yes. and there are people out there trying to do that. They're trying to say this experience that I've had is doctrine. It's true. You need to do this versus understanding right. that we're all having experiences. And what I believe is going to happen, and I love it because I didn't even think about it, but, you know, your captain's logs fit right into this because I believe with the Internet and so much material and everything out there that we will begin to see people's stories line up together. And yeah. so, you know, we may find you know, 50, 100 years from now that we've got, you know, 100,000 documents that show that people independent of one another had this same experience. And we yeah. could say, oh, OK, well, this looks pretty solid that this is part of what Father's leading us into for the next age. Right. And then you've got all the fringe stuff, you know, that's off to the sides, which doesn't mean it's wrong. But I wouldn't necessarily teach people this is the way it is. I would stick yes. with what we see. And that, you know, would kind of become a third testament um, which is, you know, Father leading us into this next age and what we can expect and what we, how we need to behave or how we need to. And I don't even like that word behave because that's it's real. That's been totally misconstrued for you know the the church age, but that we would understand what Father is looking for us to experience in this next age, and that the captain's logs would begin to pile up in terms of all these people agree in this area, and we can see that this is a direction that Father wants us to go. So. Yes. Yes. That's so important. And that's, it's all about just what is, what does he want us to do? And what he wants us to do is, is come to him yeah. daily. The logs are really a way to, for me personally, throughout my life to just chart time spent with him. Yeah. And um, don't think that Jesus was in the mountain for two hours every morning or five hours going like, father, I need a new baseball bat and aunt Susie needs her car fixed. And let me think what else, I mean, that would be so boring thinking in prayer like that. No, he was right. going and having these experiences. I mean, who knows what he was doing? <laughs> he was probably seeing the future and just communing with his father, Absolutely. talking about stuff, getting stuff done in the spirit. Yeah. And then when he went into his day, it was like, it just played out, you know, whatever it was that he saw in those times. So, I mean, whether you do it with a laptop, I mean, if you can best to write it down with your hand, but I mean, I get carpal tunnel, but sometimes I'll just write so fast. I don't even know what I'm writing. And then I'll go back yeah. and listen or read it. And I'll be like, okay, this is definitely my spirit. Oh, that was maybe better. Like, that was good. What was that? There's no right. way I could have made that up. And then, you know, over the years, rather than being bogged down by it, the Lord is always saying, look, consolidate your gains. Go back and review, not to make a religion out of what I've shown you, right. but consolidate the things that you've already received and put them into practice. Okay, what is a vegetable of the spirit? To, I mean, that's a joke. I mean, we, it just sounds funny. We talk about the fruit of the spirit. Where's the veggies? You know, so like maybe there's some something about this revelation of the vegetables. The squash represents the catharsis of my whatever blah 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 and i don't know put something into <laughs> sorry into practice so like finding out well what is the purpose of these visions and how am i reaching out and blessing someone else and what are we actually getting done when we started doing spirit wars in 2016 people were contacting me and saying look i'm having visions about these battles over uh, Hollywood and that it's burning down and we're fighting this and that demon. And, and it was like, this is kind of fun, but maybe kind of, I don't know, maybe too much fantasy or something. Boom. Hollywood burns down practically. Like everybody's bailing Hollywood, all the pedophile stuff's coming out. That kind of stuff is, is maybe one practical example. Um, Trump coming into office, I think is another example of we could have never gotten the kind of stuff done that we have through him where he just shows up randomly and, you know, the, the spirit traveling, I think what we're seeing in, with InfoWars going down too in the future, possibly, I hope not, but um, we need to really pray and fight and step into the spirit and be on the throne 
with Jesus. Be on yeah. whatever throne he has for you. Don't be like false humility. No, I can't do that. Lord, I'm just too. Yeah, sure. We all are. But like nobody's showing up for work. And that's why the enemy has all these thrones in, right. the, in the spirit. Nobody's actually yeah. exercising authority in there. Yeah, no, that's a it's a very good point. In fact, uh, maybe we'll talk more about that in part two, because um, honestly, as Christians, if they just show up, like you said, show up for work, just show up. Yeah. You can take your throne back. There's really not much of a battle because uh, you just need to tell them, get off your throne so you can step on. That's what I think one of the things that Father's waiting for is for his people to show up in the heavens and do the work. Right. Do the work. So, Michael, hey, always a good time having you on. Um, and for those of you who are watching, uh, you can see part two tomorrow. Make sure you tune in. And uh, if you want to see the behind the scenes section that we're going to do a, a little bit later as well, go to kingdomtalksmedia.com and go to the partnership section. Click on the big easy button. It says uh, partnerships. And that will take you into the section where you can click on behind the scenes. And for $10 a month, you get to see all the shows ahead of time. And you also get the behind the scenes section, which is just for the members. So we appreciate each and every one of you and what you're doing. Michael, thank you. I honor you and bless you. And thank you for being on here. And uh, look forward to part two. All right. Take care. Bless you guys. Thank you for taking time out to listen to Kingdom Talks. You can find out more about Kingdom Talks Media and our mission to unite in faith and grow as mature sons at KingdomTalksMedia.com. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, Fringe Radio Network, and many more places. Go to our website to find links to all of our media outlets, as well as fantastic online courses and conferences, including the life-changing interactive course, Ultimate Impact. And last but not least, we ask that you consider partnering with us to fulfill the mission to get these messages to the world. To become a partner, go to the Partnership tab on our website. Thank you, and until next time, live a blessed life Keep carrying us in your heart and sharing us wherever hearts are open.